Bharatiya Janata Party representing Nandurbar and was one of the youngest, if not the youngest MP India has ever had. And MLA, youngest ever, soon to be MLA, youngest ever MLA that uh, the state has had. And Praniti Shinde, uh, MLA of the Congress in the Maharashtra Assembly. Okay, I'm just going to redo that introduction so that uh, we have it for television. Uh, women leaders in Indian politics. We have a stellar panel of four women leaders who've carved their own niche for various reasons. On my extreme left is Hina Gavich. She's a medical doctor who at the age of 26 won an election for the first time and thereby became, I think, the youngest MLA that Maharashtra certainly has had. And a member, youngest MP that Maharashtra has ever had at the age of 26. Pankaja Munde is National Secretary of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Priyanka Chaturvedi is Deputy Leader of the Shiv Sena in the Rajya Sabha. And Praniti Shinde is member of the Maharashtra Assembly. Thank you all very much for joining us. You've got a mic next to uh, each of you. Uh, I think it'll be on your, uh, Ina, on your left, I think. Is there a mic? Oh, there's one there. Great. Uh, women leaders in Indian politics. Before this session began, we had a photo shoot with all the four women uh, on the panel. And they had a blast. And it made you wonder that if we had more women in parliament, more women in the assembly, you would have much more fun than we have at the moment. Am I right, Priyanka Chaturvedi, that women make far better politicians in general than men do? You can really make a splash, can't you? Is that even a question to ask? Of course we do. And of course, that's what we fight for. We need more women in the parliament, in the assemblies, to make it not just a, a more a fun place, but we need to make it a more equitable space. We need to have an inclusive space, a progressive space, and women come with all of that. But do the men actually allow you, if I may push that, inside parliament? I always see the men hanging together in their groups, especially those from North India and the Hindi heartland. Do they have space for a woman to actually be part of their, of their biradri in a way, their tribe? Yes, absolutely they do. And I think they look at us with wonder, ke, you know, okay, she is the one who's the other gender and how do we make conversation? But they're getting used to it because you're ensuring that they get used to it. More the women, more the conversations and more the, you know, the barriers that they have created over the years breaking down. Very interesting. Pankaja Munde. You know, you are seen as a, whenever I re read you the sort of so-called rebel within the Maharashtra BJP. And it almost seems if a woman is aggressive, then she could become a rebel. If a man can get away with a lot of things, is it much more difficult for you? And you've had a lot of difficulties in a way taking on the male-dominated establishment of Maharashtra. Honest answer. Of course, that's what people expect from me anyways. Uh, and they are used to it also. Uh, basically, if you would have asked me this question five years ago, I would have answered something different. But my experience uh, of last decade of politics has changed a lot of opinions about things. Because when, uh, how we, we are brought up, we are brought up in a very secured way. So I always thought I am not the victim. I am not somebody lesser than other pers other gender. But now when I am in real world, in real politics, I feel it is not as easy as uh, for men it is. So, of course, women have to talk a little louder than normal. What is the biggest difficulty? What is the biggest difficulty for a woman to make her, ma her mark in politics? See, I feel women are judged a lot. That is the biggest difficulty. If you see a man delivering speech, you will, uh, uh, you will wonder how, kitna, you know, how... Uh, progressive speech, how straightforward, how, you know, the uh, 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 whole body language. And if woman talks with that, all the gestures which are acknowledged and praised in a man, they judge her. They say, oh, she's very aggressive. She's very uh, rebel. She's disobedient. I am none of that. I am just myself, which any other man is in this world. But because I'm a woman, they judge me a little bit more. Okay, that's, that's a very, very bold, straight, frank answer. Praniti Shinde, uh, you know, on this panel, three of you, 
are uh, are daughters of politicians and therefore the question will ar arise is that what gives you the soft entry and makes it easier for you than let's say a mayawati or a mamta banerji who didn't have any such lineage but had to make it in a very male dominated world was it easier because you were sushil kumar shinde's daughter to make a mark in politics um i wouldn't lie i think it is it you have a free pass when you're uh, someone's daughter in polit uh, in politics uh, whether you're the daughter or the son or you have a free pass when it's your first election but uh, we live in a democracy which is a very healthy thriving democracy and again uh, it takes a lot for a woman to prove herself so then when you win the second election and the third election and that's when people realize okay she's serious about her work and then um, i feel it's your work that counts and work speaks more than anything else but you definitely i think have a, a a a bit of an advantage if you're born in a political family but at the same time there are so many expectations when you're born in a political family you get compared to uh, the person who got you a free pass and that means there's double pressure as well because there's comparison all the time so in compared to somebody in comparison to somebody who's you know who doesn't have a background he he's not so much in the public glare as as much as we are and then there's always a comparison so we are always uh, 24/7 we're at work and we're there to prove ourselves and we have to be in the constituency and answerable to everybody more than somebody who doesn't have a badge so you're judged both as a woman politician and you are judged as the daughter of sushil kumar shinde or the daughter of uh, uh, gopinath munde and hina you're an interesting case study because you became an mp at 26 while you were doing your md exam and you defeated i think manik rao gavit who's a multiple time winner from that constituency yeah that's absolutely correct what for you i mean wasn't being a doctor a nicer place to be in than being in politics <laughs> well i think that uh... now uh, if you ask me that question i would say that yes it would have been better had i been only a doctor but yes of course uh, uh, getting elected uh, as a member of parliament at the age of 26 and uh, like you mentioned that uh, contesting against uh, somebody who was a nine time mp of course there were lots of expectations uh, from me and uh, i had to work i would say double then what if in my place there was somebody else because uh, if i am contesting at 26 and i am contesting against somebody who has been a member of parliament for 40 years then i have to convince how hina gavit is better than the other person so i think uh, yes it was challenging but uh, i got to learn a lot what's what's more difficult being an mbbs doctor or being an md or being a member of parliament mp now, or md what's more difficult i think now becoming an mp is more difficult because md we have a fixed curriculum we have a fixed syllabus but for mp there is no fixed syllabus we have to work <laughs> 24 by 7 for the people so but I, you know she deserves a huge hand very few people know to defeat to defeat the person she did what eight time mp nine time nine time mp is what she defeated at the age of 26 which is quite remarkable uh, for you hina uh but you know when i look at the numbers priyanka chaturvedi the numbers are heavily weighed against you at the moment in parliament there are about 78 women mps which is just about 14% of parliament i look at the british parliament it's up to 32% do you ever really think that we will reach a stage where women will get forget about 49 50% forget reservation that we will even have 30% of our parliament will be women will we even reach that stage ever or will the men never allow it uh, that is exactly what we were discussing at lunch every time asking a woman has uh, is she getting the raw deal it's very important to have men having this conversation that how many seats are you willing to let go to have women in your place so that is a very important question to have this entire onus of more representation etc of course i can give you experiences we are all sharing our experiences it's also important to hear the other gender how much are they willing to let go every time i talk about a reservation even if it's not been passed in the parliament they are like tum hamari naukri khatre mein dal rahi ho priyanka why are you talking about a 50% reservation i said because we are 50% of this country so i will ask for that 50% reservation if you haven't been able to provide that to us and i am hoping that uh, political parties are realizing and i must tell you why they're realizing that it is important to have women representatives because women are coming out in larger numbers to vote and make their vote count so it has become an entire constituency in itself to have women in political 
parties playing important roles. So I'm definitely hopeful that there would be more representation in times to come. Let, let's do a poll. How many people in this audience believe we should have 33% reservation for women in assemblies and in parliament? That's not, well, that's about almost all. How, you know, it's interesting they'll raise their hands here. But if this was a gathering of politicians, you can be sure none of them would raise their hands. Or they would pretend to raise their hands and then not go ahead with it. But I want to ask you, uh, uh, Pangaja, taking off from that, is there a women's vote bank? Priyanka made an interesting point. More and more women, the last election saw for the first time more women in India voting than men. And do you believe that politicians have realized women vote bank is there? Will Mahilas vote for a Mahila? Do they vote for a Mahila or do they vote for whoever is the best candidate? I feel it should be the, they should vote for the best candidate. It, that will be fair. Because I am not uh, going to judge the candidate on the uh, gender uh, based, you know. But uh, women vote bank is a very, very strong vote bank. And all the men are eyeing on the women vote bank. Means all the men are also planning their strategies looking at women vote bank. All of us, all the politicians, because the decisions they are taking, the, uh, the schemes they are designing, they are mostly now, if you see this whole decade, all the schemes are women-centric. Uh, right from Beti Bachao to Women Empowerment, lot of things are women-centric and that is a big vote bank. So convincing women is something different and voting for women is different. I feel everyone should vote for the good candidate. You know, but do women speak out enough, Praniti? I mean, we've had the terrible Bilkis Banu case, for example, where her rapists and murderers have been remitted. Uh, their sentence has been remitted. Why don't I see more women coming together and saying enough is enough at, across party lines and saying we are not going to accept this? You know, why, why is, just as there is a women's vote bank, can women politicians come together, form a coalition of women uh, politicians? Possible? Yeah, I think it is because even when we're in parliament or when we're in the assemblies, we all across party lines come together over various issues, whether it's reservation, whether it's the Shakti bill which was passed in the Maharashtra assembly. We've come together, uh, we come together, of course, we have to speak louder than the men to be heard, to make our mark, but um, and more often than not, when we're speaking against uh, something that is supported by the people in power, it's, it's, a, it's questionable how much of us are heard or how much of us are taken seriously. So I think that is an important issue here. Because just yesterday there was a controversy in Maharashtra, and you know what I'm talking about, where women are getting objectified by the government in part. And then the moment we speak against them, uh, they try to silence our voices. They silence voices of the common woman. Where, uh, uh, of, of, they're trying to silence voices of people's representatives. So imagine the misery of the common woman. No, are you saying woman. that the male politicians don't take a woman seriously in politics? Uh, they never do. You have to prove your point. You have to make your mark. You have to work very hard to, make, to, to tell them that we're serious about what we're doing. It's, it's, there's a mental block and not just in politics, but I'm sure most women here would agree as well. In the, you said women make really good politicians. I would say women make really good career women. Women make very good leaders. But there's a mental block against a, accepting a woman as a leader in everywhere. It's a society issue. And I think all of us need to oppose this together. So, as a woman politician, it's very difficult for us to survive. It is the survival of the fittest. We have to speak louder. You know, Pankaja gets tagged, I get tagged for being aggressive, but we have to be assertive and aggressive to make our presence felt in politics. Yes, Priyanka, you wanted to add? Uh, I have uh, two small points to make uh, with regards to the Bilkis Bano uh, issue. It was a woman member of parliament who's challenged this in the Supreme Court. That's one, of them. Ma one, of, one them of, of them. One of them who's. is one of them. One of the many petitioners. But you have to give her that credit. I will talk about the bully by Suli deals that happened, which totally objectified women from the minority. They, they embarrassed them, they tried to undermine them, they tried to humiliate them. And it was me who spoke to the commissioner, Mumbai police commissioners, kept speaking about it till the IT minister took note of it and ensured that this was done. However, when you talk about women speaking across political parties, 
Unfortunately, when I entered the parliament, my idea was that I'll get women members of parliament to rise above their politics and speak about gender-based issues, specifically gender-based, irrespective of our politics. For us to actually address this issue, we have somehow not been able to get everybody on board. So that is our reducing ourselves to our political narratives. You know, the flip side, of course, is that, you know, women are told you handle health, women and, women and uh, uh, child welfare, these are your departments. You can't deal with defense. You know, defense is a male portfolio. Nirmala Sitaraman has broken a ceiling. Finance minister is now a woman. Sushma Swaraj, was Sushma Swaraj became a uh, foreign affairs minister. Indira Gandhi, congresswoman will remind us of Indira Gandhi every time you speak about Nirmala Sitaraman. Uh, but Hina Gavit, is it true that there are certain departments that are seen that this department is reserved? Hai? It used to be earlier. But now, you, like you only mentioned, that defense, supposedly a male-dominated field, has had women uh, ministers leading that. Finance, a very important portfolio, is uh, with a women minister. So I think slowly that trend is changing now. And so-called that stamp that this department only a male can lead, I think that is now slowly uh, you don't agree? Okay. For, yes, yes. Uh, yes, Pranga Java, you first. When I was given ministry, women and child welfare ministry was mandatory to give it. That to was me. your first ministry. But I got rural development, water conservation. So that was a very good opportunity for me to prove rural development was never given to a woman ever in the past. So I felt it was a challenge for me to perform uh, how much I could in that ministry. But as she said, there is, uh, the, everything is changing. People are accepting defense, uh, finance, and uh, external affairs. These portfolios were given to uh, women. Of course, our uh, country was run by a women prime minister. We have a women president. But my question is, this will change the look of the decision maker who is giving those decisions. But will this really change fate of common women? is the biggest fight we are going to that's, face. That's a big question. Priyanka Chaturvedi, you come from a very male-dominated party. When I look at the Shiv Sena, I mean, the imagery of the Shiv Sena is very machismo. I mean, that was its, at least its, its sort of early years were very, very male-dominated. Do you feel, honestly, a fish out of water? Absolutely not. Uh, as far as the local bodies are concerned, we have over 50% women candidates who have won, who have been mayors, deputy mayors, uh, have important positions. In fact, uh, in the, in the uh, 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 legislative council, we have a, a woman vice uh, uh, chairperson. So uh, this, is a, this is another thing. And uh, when we come back to this argument, oh, it's a very male-dominated party, the first leader after perhaps Sri Rahul Gandhi would have been uh, uh, Uddhav Thakre ji, who spoke on the podium, on the Shera rally, making it about Bilkis Bano and making people realize that a government which cannot respect its women cannot do justice to the role that they are playing. So I, I totally dismiss this charge and the largest chunk of supporters that we are getting are women, uh, you know, uh, women citizens of the state who are supporting the government, uh, the government which fell. And just to, you know, just a cheeky response to what they said, uh, they said women are breaking barriers and they, they are going beyond the decided roles. I think this unconstitutional government has done away with women totally. There is no woman in the cabinet. They have given the responsibility of women and child welfare to Sri Lodha ji. That you let allow us to handle it. I mean, he'll be doing a better job of it, perhaps. So they've done. The, they've they've made changes, like she said. There are changes happening. So this unconstitutional government has shown that they can do run a government. The biggest state of uh, uh, you know amongst the second biggest state in India can run without a woman in the cabinet. You know, but do women have to also conform? That if you are in politics, you're going to have to dress a particular way, look a particular way, particularly in your public. Uh, appearances, you can't be, in, in that sense, you have to be a conservative woman in terms of your dress, if not your attitudes in terms of, is that true or not? That you can't, you know, you, you are very conscious of your public appearance all the time. Is that true? Yeah, so, um, I think uh, what you're saying is absolutely right, because uh, Pankajatai just mentioned that women are being judged. So, irrespective of what we think, how we work, sometimes how we dress up becomes a talk of the town that, oh, she wore this and she came to the parliament. Oh, she wore this and she went to a public function. So I think that 
you know that mindset has to change so uh, i absolutely uh, you know agree and see now we are all dressed in indian dress, this dresses we could have wore a jeans and t-shirt but yes we have to when we go to any formal function we have to dress up in a particular uh, you know way and i think my colleagues will also agree to that you know because i remember during the women's reservation bill debate sharad yadav had said ye parkati mahila hain sab parkati mahila aayengi short head women will enter so you would have been priyanka chaturvedi for sharad yadav a parkati woman you know short head <laughs> unhone but i you know that's there are stereotypes in a way that still exist is that changing in parliament do you really see it changing be honest because we don't know what what happens in your committees and your meetings do they still look at you no. as ye priyanka chaturvedi kahan se aa gayi ha wo to khair sabhi poochte hain why does the politicians ye kahan se aa gayi types but uh, no i think that mindset is changing quite a bit in terms of except for we had one incident yesterday where a journalist a woman journalist happened to ask sambhaji bide ji a particular question and he said tum bindi nahi lagati ho to main tumhare sawal ka jawab nahi dunga so we have moments like these but we women are taking that head on we are fighting so when a chief minister sitting chief minister of uttarakhand had said ye rip jeans wali mahilaen kabhi bhi achhi maan nahi ho sakti so i wore a rip jeans and i said boss i am a good mother i am a good politician and you don't judge me on the basis of my rip jeans it was just a matter of time before he had to step down so the point is that till you don't push those barriers till you don't push that male dominated thought process we are going to continue to confine ourselves why should i confine myself to what sharad yadav ji thinks of women with short hair i have short hair i'm happy with it live with it no i i, <coughs> I also think we live in two different indias there's a rural india which which i represent so it's a little difficult for people to accept uh, you know say rib jeans or whatever but i think that that mindset like she said should change we are somewhere succumbing to the fact that people will not like us in jeans in the constituency that we represent but again it's a question of mindset until all of us speak why are we always looked at upon i mean looked at the way we dress why can't people start looking at women beyond that why can't we be looked at for what we do and the work we do and i feel that is changing slowly but surely and like priyanka gandhi a couple of years ago she entered in trousers and a shirt in the in, in the parliament house and there was a big hoo ha about it but i think somewhere all of us across party lines if we I think we should start the change, you know, and that's what, let's. You should have all come to the program in, in ripped jeans. jeans. <laughs> all four of you would have come to this program in ripped jeans. I know. I think we should all be here. Uh, basically, there is a formal attire in every country sure. about certain programs. So this is our formal attire. But if you, I go to my office so many times wearing jeans, t-shirt, track pants. I go from my gym straight. so i am i got people used to me uh, seeing me in for a uh, uh, western outfits also of course i'll wear decent clothes because that's how i am brought up that doesn't have anything to do with what i am people should not judge you uh, uh, on what you're wearing but definitely in this country people accept bad character men but not a good dressed woman that is surprising and shocking and sad you know we've just got a couple of minutes and i'm going to ask you this question because before we started off i had told hina about how mamta banerji once told me that she had to be aggressive because that's the only way the men in her party would take her seriously as this party supremo and hina agreed and said naitar te amala khaun jatil which means which only in marathi you will understand which means they'll finish us otherwise uh given that i want to ask all four of you do you have a role model woman politician in india someone whom you really admire you start hina role it could be a male model uh, it could be a male politician or a female is there someone you really admire but preferably a woman who is that one woman politician you say and say wow that's the way a woman politician should be uh, so women politician if you ask i would say sushma ji sushma swaraj ji she is somebody i really admire and when first time i became a parliamentarian i went to the library and used to study her speeches also because she used to speak wonderful the way she used to work i think she is one role model that i if you ask a women role model and if you ask me uh, in general i would say it's my father because whatever i have learned is from him and i really uh, follow him Okay, yeah. Pankaja Munde, who's the who's your role model woman politician? 
so only woman politician i have to say uh, you tell me you're male and woman see i always feel uh, there is no leaderess it is always a leader so it leader should be not gender okay. I, we will have to achieve that stage but i always admired atal bihari vajpay i had at home only pramod mahajan gopinath munde so if i say their name but how what i have become today is what i've learned from my father definitely but as she said i'll second that because sushma ji as as a child i have grown up seeing sushma ji and I, she was my role model still today i really feel i want to be like her because it's not only about a politician the kind of person she was the orator she was how she uh, what she did for party i really seen her journey very closely and i really want to be like her that's what is role model you okay so you like could her. you hopefully could become external affairs minister one day <laughs> as a result priyanka chaturvedi who's your role model woman politician so um it would sound very cliched but i have grown up watching her and wanting to be like her and imbibe her values and the aggression that she had would be indira gandhi ji indira so gandhi I, i don't have two thoughts in my mind whenever i think of uh, any woman who inspired me when i was growing up and wanting to be like her to be in politics and break that entire barrier of you know women in politics and the second would definitely be sushma swaraj ji with the way she used to speak the way you sh she used to conduct herself i think it was and every challenge she was willing to take uh, her way so those are two people but indira gandhi ji by far because my a lot of how i've seen her has inspired me to do more okay praniti shinde goes without saying at indira gandhi because i think today especially in today's uh, day, she's so relevant in today's age because she was a leader of the masses and she mingled equally well with international leadership as well she took some stunning decisions for the country due to which we are where we are now and we today i think we need a leader like her um, you know she was she's she's inspired all of us across party lines and of course Mrs Sonia Gandhi for the struggle that she went through the pain that she went through she got the party together in spite of what she went through that's um that's commendable and of course uh, my father because the because of you know he 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 still teaches me that is the survival of the fittest and you have to sort of keep going to reach where you are so but yes mrs gandhi for sure and um, we miss her leadership I, I thought one of you would at least name Mayavati, Mamta, or Jayalalita, because these were these were I, the three these were the three women are, yes. politicians I have seen who know how to put men in their place. I I really am so no, uh, actually just kept out of my mind. I also like Jayalalita ji when I went for uh, her funeral just to take her darshan because I was so even her fight. See, every woman has a very tough story. So if you could. you asked us name one but even they are heroes of today i whatever party lines they are all okay <laughs> we'll leave it there i only hope that we have many more such role models and many more women reaching the very top in politics we only have one woman chief minister at the moment and that's a statistic that is simply not acceptable for a country where women are i can tell our viewers we have the highest percentage at the moment of women pilots compared to men anywhere in the world and that's reason to celebrate hopefully one day we can celebrate and say we have the highest percentage of women politicians mps and mlas compared to any other part of the world that's the future women are the future of this country thank you all very much for joining us here on uh, this very special show thank you thank you so much and i'd like to welcome on stage dr seema saini ceo nl dalmia education to present a token of appreciation to our wonderful panelists today Just one moment just one moment